We're going to take a look at some partial fractions that have quadratic factors. We want to do um, some integrals, and uh, sometimes they just don't really look like something that you can handle. Um, so, for example, we might have uh, dx over the quantity x plus 1 times the quantity x squared plus 1. Um, so, what I want to do here is I'm going to divide it up into two fractions, um, a over x plus 1 plus, and then bx plus c over x squared plus 1. So what you want to do is you want to put a polynomial that is uh, one degree lower than the polynomial in the denominator. So the polynomial in the denominator is quadratic, so we need a generic linear equation above it. So that's bx plus c. Um, so you can get the sense immediately that these can get out of hand with the uh, unknowns pretty quickly. So that's going to be equal to the original. Now the technique is pretty much the same as what you've done previously. Clear the denominator. Um, the issue is it's not usually as easy to find values um, immediately, like the cover-up method isn't as likely to work for you here. Uh, for example, actually it is going to work here to find a, so I'm going to just let x equal negative 1, and right away I'm going to find a. So I'm left with 2a on the left hand side, and then since it's x plus 1, when x is negative 1 that goes away. And that just equals 1, so immediately I know that a is 1 half. Um, so let's think. Uh, the next easiest number to plug in is probably 0 because it's going to make b go away. So if I let um, x equals 0, I end up with uh, 0 plus 1 is 1 times a, so just 1 half, and then plus um, 0 plus 1 is 1, so 1 times the b term goes away because b times 0 is 0, so really just plus c equals 1, so I have c equals 1 half. Um, and now I, I can really pick any number um, because I know what a is and I know what c is. So when I pick x, the only thing I won't know is b, and it'll just be a kind of really easy pre-algebra thing to solve. So I'm going to let x equal 1. You want to pick an easy number at that point. So that gives me 2 of a, and then plus 2 times the quantity b plus 1 half equals 1. I can kind of rearrange a little bit here like that, and finally I get... Uh, b equals negative one half, and uh, so ultimately I wanted to do this integral. So let's see. Get this, and now I know that a is equal to one half. B was negative one half, and c was one half. A lot of one halves in this problem. Um, so I get one half of this integral, and then minus one half of this integral and plus one half of this integral. And all three of these are things that I can do. Uh, you'll notice I reversed the last one. I made it one plus x squared. That's because I just have arctan's derivative memorized that way. Um, so this will be one half natural log of the absolute value of x plus one. And then minus one half. Uh, let u equal x squared plus one. So there needs to be a two x in the denominator. So two and then one half on the outside. One half natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus one plus one half, and then that's arctan right there. So inverse tangent of x, and plus c. All right, so that's one example with a uh, quadratic factor. Uh, here's a nightmare scenario where we have a repeated quadratic factor, and uh, you know these just keep getting worse. So I'm going to start off by rewriting it this way. So I put a generic linear function over y squared plus 1 to the first power, and a different generic over y squared plus 1 uh, to the second power. So now I have to solve for a, b, c, and d. So I'll clear the denominator to get uh, y squared plus 1, the quantity a, y plus b, plus um, c, y plus d equals y squared plus 2y plus 1. Uh, I'm going to try something here that I haven't done in the other videos yet, um, and that is I'm going to expand everything and then try to equate coefficients, and sometimes that's a really quick way to do this. And in this case, I think it's going to work out nicely. So if I look at this, um, on the left-hand side, the coefficient of y cubed is a. There is no y cubed on the right-hand side, so a must be 0. Uh, now let's look at the squared. So we have a by squared on this side, and just a y squared on that side, so b must equal 1. So now I know a is 0 and b is 1. That's going to be important because... On the left-hand side, the coefficient of y is actually a plus c, but a is 0, so really it's just c. Um, and on the right-hand side, it's 2, so a plus c equals 2, but since a was 0, really we just know c is 2. 
And then similarly, um, on the left-hand side, the constant term is b plus d, and on the right it's 1. But since I knew that b was 1, that must mean that d is equal to 0. So now I know a, b, c, and d. Um, so this integral that I started with, like that, has become, well, that was my kind of generic form. And so I know a is 0, b is 1, c is 2, and d is 0. So I actually have 1 over 1 plus y squared dy plus 2y over um, the quantity, oop, I forgot a squared. Let's see here. That's supposed to be squared. Uh, 2y over uh, the quantity y squared plus 1 squared. So if I do that, I get um, 2y and then, uh, sorry, I get uh, arctan of y, which is what I was expecting. And then to integrate this, uh, let's let u equal y squared plus 1. So du is 2y dy. So it's really just u to the negative 2. So this becomes minus um, y squared plus 1 to the negative first, and then plus c. All right, so that's another example, and I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.